Hi, beautiful people. Welcome back. If you're new, welcome, welcome. My name is Georgia. So as you could tell from the title, we are going to do a recap and a review of Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 8, Episode 1. So yes, they finally have told us that it is the 8th season. We are all on the same road right now. We are all on the same track. There is no... Um, not knowing, guessing, whatever. This is season eight. So it starts off the episode with um, them talking about Martel's arrest. And as we know, while they were on break, we there was a lot of bloggers, including myself, who reported on it that Martel got arrested. And everybody wanted to know why and stuff like that. And then we did our little research and we did our deep dive in and we found out what it was about. So we're going to talk about it some more. So we we have where everybody's in their respective homes talking about it. No, not everybody. We have Stormy and um Stormy and her husband talking about it. And then we have the camera. We are panning between different scenes where we have Melody at home and then Martel. So we have Melody at home. She has her security, her private security detail with her. They're outside and they're telling her what the plan is because apparently um him getting arrested even though it was inevitable she knew it was gonna happen it was also a surprise to her that it happened to melody that it happened when it did because at that time he he apparently had it was his time to have the kids so it happened while he had the kids and um she said she didn't know you know what would happen if he would unravel or whatever so she wanted to make sure that she had a security detail so we have her talking to the security guys. She left them outside to go, um, you know, you know, check out the perimeter, do what they ha- whatever security does. And then she goes back inside and we find out that her brother Marcus is also there. So even with that now, we have them, like I said, going between scenes. We see them go to another scene where we have Martel comes into the room and he's talking to his mom, to- comes into the living room and he's talking to the mom and he's saying that, you know, he's telling Mama Holt that he can't wrap his head around this, him getting arrested. So she was like, I'm like, right away, Mama Holt, of course, she's being a mom. She's going to defend her child no matter how old you are. You know, when you're a mom, you, you, you make sure that all your kids are okay. So she's like, I can't believe you got arrested over some text messages. Be a woman and handle your business like a woman. I'm like, that statement took me. I was take, I was thrown for a loop right there. I'm like, wait, mama, calm down a little bit. I know you're going to come out swinging, defending your son, but let's hear what is happening. So Martel is telling her, thank her for coming to come and get the kids when she did, because apparently she was the one who went and picked up the kids when he got arrested. And the way it happened, I also did a video on this as well. I did a full video in detail on this. I'm going to link it down below where... You know, he told us how it happened because right after it happened that day, he was he was arrested and released the same day. And then he went on to tell us how it happened. So it, apparently um, he said he needed some uh, some paperwork from the records department. And he had his kids with him. He dropped off his um, daughter at tennis or two of the kids at tennis. I'm not sure which one. He said he had two of the kids in the car. And he left them in the car to go into the, the precinct. Well, first of all, you're leaving the young kids in the car. That was not smart. You should have taken them inside with you. So he said when he went in, um, they told him to hold on and disappear for whatever. And then they come back and say, well, you have, there's an, a, a warrant for your arrest out there. I don't think that was the first time Martel knew that there was a warrant out there. He had to have known that there was a warrant out there for his arrest. And I think he hoping that he had the kids and still needed to get the paperwork that they would have said, you know what? Um, this is what's going on. Make sure you come and turn yourself. I think he went to go fish to see if it was really true. And he took the kids with him as a buffer. But as he, as he said, you know, he had to call his mom to come get the kids and, um, he turned himself in. So he was in there for a couple of hours. He, um, they processed him. Somebody helped bail him out. That was another room of like who bailed him out. And I don't know if I think it's going to be revealed on this season. Who was the person who bailed him out of jail? And then he was in and out within a few hours. So, okay, we have him talking to his mom about that. Then we have Melody talking to her brother about how it happened and how 
she wasn't um she was quite surprised that it happened when it did and that within the time that he had the kids like nobody called her like to come get the kids his mom didn't call he didn't call her anything they just handled their business and did what they had to do and marcus said the reason why he showed up in in huntsville is because he was calling her and she wasn't picking up her phone so he had to drive down to make sure that she was okay you know because this was a surprise to everybody we heard about you know rumors about it happening but it was a surprise to everybody when it actually did so like i said we have them flipping back and forth so martel is again talking to his mom about everything he's saying somehow they're making it about the kids and um saying that the kids don't need to see something like this you've been a good dad yes i'm a good dad we all know the kids need their dad more than they need their mom. He actually said that. And then he kind of caught himself. And I'm like, Martel, are you for real? Look how many single mothers we have out there raising their kids. Look how many men we have walk away from their families. Not to say that there aren't good men out there. But majority of people out there raising kids are single moms. Are you talking about the kids need their, their dad more than they need their mom? No, a statement like that should not have been said. I guess you couldn't stop yourself when you started saying it. So you just let it flow. He's going to say, yes, they need their mom too, but they need their dad as well. They're making it all about the kids. And we all know what it's about. Um, people are saying that um, Melody should not have done that. But if Ariane had agreed to releasing that video, what would that have done to her reputation? And now that she actually, um, you know, filed charges and it's just taking its natural course, then that's what it is. You can't do that. You can't threaten people like that and expect it to just shake it off and, oh, he's not going to do nothing because you don't actually know what somebody is capable of. Um, we've seen it on the show where he is constantly yelling at her and stuff. So we don't know if he's really unraveling. So she has to make sure that she protects herself. You know, he don't even know what he's going to do from one moment to the next. So we're going to help him figure it out and make sure that everybody stays safe and everybody um respects each other so yeah that was the the scene between um melody and her brother marcus and also between um mama holt and martel so in the next scene we have stormy visiting miss nell at the daycare center stormy is going to be the bone carrier i see there's always one in every in every show so I guess Stormy is the one so Stormy is visiting Miss Nell at the nail center she said she bought her some um, body glaze it's in the car she couldn't bring it in in one trip Miss Nell did you get your body glaze because I'm being a little bit messy now where people are saying they order their stuff and they still haven't received it so did she actually bring it inside and give it to you and why haven't you done a review on it we want to know what you think so she's talking about you know, they hug each other, greet each other. Miss Nell give her some compliments about her, you know, weight loss. She says she's in the gym. She's doing her thing. She looks good. She looks good. And Miss Nell was like, you know, I got to get in there and get my body right too. So one of the things she started talking about was um, Kiki and the blogs. And this is the first I'm hearing about that. She said that Kiki was going around and telling the blogs about each of the scenes that were done um, in last season, season seven. Now that we know we're in season eight. Um things that happen in Houston and stuff like that. But I didn't see anything like that on the internet. Did you guys see? If you guys know of a video where we have Kiki talking about the um, breakdown of the show and all that stuff, link it in the description for everybody to watch because I have not seen that and I did not hear anything about that. She says that, you know, she was rooting for Kiki. I'm rooting for you. I was rooting for you. And, you know, she was talking, remember she said she had a friend in a similar situation as Kiki. And um, she really wants to see Kiki do well. And she hopes that Kiki will straighten up. And um, she really wants to see her win. Same thing Miss Nell said. So we'll see what happened in the season. We, in, in, the, um, in the clips that they show off of what's coming up. I haven't seen Kiki in any scene. So is Kiki back this season or what? I don't know. They also talk about Martel's arrest. And Stormy asks Miss Nell, what do you think about you know Martel getting arrested? And Miss Nell says she don't agree with it only because the history of our black men having to deal with the police. You know, you don't want to see that happening. But and I kind of agree with her in a sense. 
And she's saying that this could have been worked out. You know, it didn't have to get to the authorities. But are you sure? And then she also said, you never know until you're in that situation. So she's kind of, she's quite not sure. But, you know, my opinion as far as this is concerned, Martel was really unraveling from what we've seen because everything is played out on the show and in social media. Nobody's acting and we see that he kept pushing Mel, pushing Mel, but she had to, she kept telling him, leave me alone. And he wouldn't. So she had to do what she had to do. And we still know it's in the courts. Nothing is settled yet. Can she um, drop the charges? Can she go back and say, you know what, never mind. I don't know how, how it works in that situation. But Miss Nell was saying she didn't agree with him getting arrested because she's not in Mel's shoes. And um, if something could be worked out, you know, worked out, other than going through the system, why take it there? Because we all know that um, the justice system does not favor our our black men, especially. So now they talk about Carlos's King, Carlos King's podcast that was coming up, and um, Stormy said she was planning on going. She was going to see how it worked out because she had another event with her family that day, but she was going to try her best to show because she did buy tickets. Miss Nell says she wasn't going because she wasn't able to get tickets. It was sold out by the time she went to get it. So she wasn't going. And that Melody was going to be his first guest. And it should be quite interesting. So that's what they talked about there. Then they talked about Sonny and Moses. I'm telling you. This was Stormy is making sure she touched base with Nell on everything. We're talking about Destiny's ex-boyfriend and the TV producer getting married. That's some hot tea, hot gossip, whatever. And they talked about that for a little while. It was a, quite a shock to Miss Nell, she said, because she's spoken on FaceTime with Destiny and Moses right by her side. And it was also a shock to Stormy because she said, based on, you know, what's going on, it's just messy. She's like, you know, um, the fact that you work with Destiny, you were kind of her friend, you know, why would you even take in there? And even the fact that you know, she knows Destiny, it's like, it's like um, Sonny saying to Moses, I want to see what Destiny tastes like. I'm like, Stormy, Stormy, oh, I'm like, I, the, the visuals of that had me screwing my face up. I'm like, really? Oh God, girl, could, did you have to actually come out and say that? So yeah, so that was what they were gossiping about everybody. She ain't telling nobody about her business though. According to the other blogs and other YouTube channels on here, they're ripping poor Stormy apart as far as saying that she has legal issues and stuff. Though why she trying to buy a house in California when she can't even pay her bills over here and stuff like that. But we're not even going to get into it. Like I said, when I do my reviews, I'm going to mostly talk about what they show me on the screen. I'm not going to veer off and start calling people out of their names and stuff like that. No. I'm going to talk about what you show me on screen. So that's what her and Miss Nell was talking about. And that ended the scene right there. So the next scene, we have Destiny and Tisha. Yeah, Destiny is back. Destiny's like, I'm back. Yep, Destiny and Tisha. Destiny went over to Tisha's house to visit her. Destiny, I like your outfit, girl. I like that denim on denim and denim. Different shades of denim. It looks so cute. You and Tisha were rocking the same hairstyles. I wonder if y'all noticed that. Same exact hairstyle. But you look cute. Tisha, I like your new spot, girl. It looked really pretty. Look comfortable. But yeah, they get right to talking um, about Sunny. And Destiny tells Tisha, girl, I thought we were friends. We were getting to know each other outside of being um producer and what producing i don't know what's the word but she was destiny's producer she says she know a lot about her she got to know her very well and tisha gave her some really good advice i think where tisha was like you know what you really need to have a conversation with with moses because moses should have been the one to tell you if not him then both of them should have told you together that you know we're having feelings for each other and um we're gonna pursue it it should not have been like blindsided, which is basically what they did to Destiny. She said it was Sonny who called her and told her that her and um, Moses were together. And she agreed with Tisha in saying that it should have been Moses. Moses should have been the one to break it to him. He's a punk for him not to be able to do that. And she said this one hurt differently only because she's known Moses for over 17 years. 
and she was flying um, back home to St. Louis to visit him at times and stuff. And um, her Sonny knew this all along. She knew that Destiny wanted to pursue something with Sonny. Destiny wanted to pursue something with Moses and for her to swipe in there and um, and do that to her was wrong. And for all she knew, she Sonny was telling her that um, she think her and Moses are cousins because every time they go to a family function, she's seeing Moses there. So she thinks that he's some sort of cousin. So I guess they're kiss, kissing cousins. You know how they say you can marry your second cousin and be okay with it. So I guess they're kissing cousins. But, you know, Tisha gave her some good advice. She told her she's sorry that happened to her. Tisha's like, if this is how people going to move out here, we got to be hiding our husband. You got to hide your husband, girl. Destiny said, you're dirty. She's saying that to Sonny. She's like, you're dirty, which, you know, a lot of people thought that, including myself. You don't do that. What happened to girl code? Similar to bro code, girl code. You just don't, you know, you date... Your friend date somebody, you don't go behind your back and date the person. Or even when they're done breaking up with them, you don't date them either. They're saying there's plenty of fishes out here in the sea. Girl, that's not true. Our black men are either incarcerated, they're gone to the other side, or um, they're already married. And we have people who have morals and values and will not cheat with married men. So for you to say there's plenty of fishes in the sea. Girl, where are they? Which sea? Point me to them. <laughs> the good ones. Either that or they've been so traumatized by um some of our women, they don't even want to be in relationships. They just feel that it's okay to just, you know, do the do and, and move along and you're not getting in relationship. But Sonny, that was wrong of you. You needed to like step back and let it play itself out before you actually went there. And it looks bad because you're her producer. You're around her a lot. You know, you, you, you're the one she tells mostly everything to. You're the one she gives her story to in order to bring it to us on television. And for you to do that to a girl, mm -mm -mm. you've been cussed out enough. But hey, that's where they were with it. So now they talk about Carlos King's um, podcast. They asked each other if they're going. They both said no because the mellow meters and the raindrops were going to be there. And then they get to talking bad about the mellow meters. Oh my God. They're saying that the mellow meter is a middle-aged broken woman who's been hurt. I'm like, Oh my God. No, they're not coming for the mellow meters. I'm not a mellow meter, by the way, guys, I'm here for the show. I'm not, don't classify me as one of the mellow meters. Yes, I'm here for everything that Melody is doing. I'm happy for her and stuff like that. But I'm here for the show to watch to see what you give us and I review on it. But I know the Melometers are going to come for Tisha because Tisha was the one who actually said it. She's like, I don't get it. But are your Melometers going in really hard on Tisha? I know there are people out there who's saying that, you know, she needs to open up her eyes and whatever's going on in her marriage. How the hell y'all know what's going on in this lady's marriage? Are you in her home with her? You don't see y'all try to get Marcel in trouble saying that he's out and about with people. Y'all making up stuff, trying to get her to divorce her husband. Tisha, stick it out there, girl. Make sure you stay with your man and you work it through and figure out what's going on for yourself. You need to see it with your own eyes before you follow what all these people are doing. If you follow what everybody's selling, you're going to go crazy. But the Melometers need to stop coming for Tisha. Leave her alone. Watch the show for what it is entertainment purposes leave her alone and go live your life that's how i am with it so yeah she so tisha and um destiny talked a little bit more and they left it at that it's good to see destiny back on the show i'm sure that melody had a hand in her coming back because as you guys know melody's also an executive producer and she has a say as to who is on the show and who's not going to be on the show. And as we know, Arion will never be on the show as long as Melody is there. But for Destiny to be back on this season, I think um, Melody said, okay, you know, let's see what happened. Let's see if we see a scene between her and um, Destiny, Melody and Destiny. I would like to see that. We all know that she's originally Martel's friend. Melody and Destiny actually were trying to build a friendship. But like she said, you can't bring too many people too close. So she's holding her at arm's length right now. They haven't even, they really didn't get into any kind of arguments and stuff like that. But um, let's see what happened. Let's see if they could rebuild a friendship and be okay with um, each other, you know, and 
hopefully she could trust her again not to go back to Martel and tell, you know, what's going on with Melody. If she's done that, which I don't think she has. Because honestly, I think Destiny really wanted a friendship with Mel. And for her not to have it, it really hurt her feelings. But one thing that I saw that Melody said in the confessional, which I got to bring up. She said she wished that what is going on between her and Martel was not happening. She was hoping to be divorced and co-parent well with him. But she see it's not possible. So that's why she has to take the measures that she has. And that's what most people want. To have a great co-parent with your kids. Wow. That is that would be wonderful. But apparently it's not happening with Martel. So like she said. This is the avenue that she needs to go. So the last scene of this um, episode. Episode 1 of season 8. We have it where we have Carlos King's podcast. We have Melody being um, the first. He said he's going to turn it into a tour. Melody is his first guest on there. Um, you know he he brought her out and he said he remember her saying that but before i get to that the people who showed up for her they showed in the audience along with the melometers and raindrops as tisha and destiny say we had marcus her brother stormy was able to make it and her mom miss vaughn was there so he said um he brought melody out and he said he remember her saying that she didn't go to her prom so actually now we're gonna turn this into a prom themed event where melody is now carlos's date so he crowned her prom queen he gave her a nice little tiara and a sash that says prom queen so now they're sitting there and they're talking he asked her how does it feel to be the executive producer for the number one show on the oprah winfrey network as melody said she did not know it wouldn't go it would go this far but it's really a good feeling to know that they've impacted so many women you know, because look at the audience, the place, was, it was full, the venue was sold out, and a lot of people came out for her. And I think they mostly came out for her more than Carlos, because Melody is liked, you know, the, all the things that she's done and doing for people, she's well liked, so um, they came out for her. So yeah, she was the prom queen with the crown on the sash, you know, executive produ producer of the number one show on the Oprah Winfrey Network, she says God is good. Carlos asked if she have any regrets. She says no. Some of, I guess they just took parts of the show and talked about it. Um, she asked her about, you know, the scene from last season when she was in the hot tub with the girls. And she said she's never been sexually satisfied. Melody had to explain to him that, listen, she got married when she was young. She was 22. She probably only had about two boyfriends at the time. And, um... You know, she was faithful to her husband. So she was, you know, just being there with him and accepting what he was giving. She had nothing to compare to. She said she never knew what she was missing until she got it. Girl. <laughs> I hear that. You never know what you're missing until you get it. So that's what that was. Um, he basically asked her, why did you, how do you feel about, you know, getting Martel arrested? And she answered that where... You know, I spoke about early at the top of the video where she said that she didn't want it to happen, but she felt that it needed to, she needed to actually get some sort of protection for herself because he was unraveling and she saw that, you know, certain things that he was doing that she'd never expect to come from him and he's never done that before. So in order to be safe, she made sure that, um, she did what she had to do to protect herself because she didn't know where he was going. Um, then they talked about a little bit more. And then we have mm -hmm, Sonny. Um, Carlos said, you know, he tells the backstory about Sonny and Moses. And then he brought them on stage. And that was it to be continued. We had somebody in the audience yell out, she crossed the line. That's right, girl. Girl code, you don't do that. And I'm sure that this is not real love. I'm sorry. Everything happened so fast. This cannot be real love. This is opportunity all around. He needs something. She wanted to be in front of the camera, maybe. You know, why didn't you stay in, in the executive, in the, in the producer department? And back to, back to um, Tisha and Destiny, where Destiny said that somebody had to put it out there that she was a producer on the show because nobody knew of Sunny. They see her and Moses come on screen a couple of times before she went away in season six, I'm assuming. 
and um season season seven and then for it to be known hey destiny's producers married to destiny's boyfriend somebody had to put it out there so it might have been her and that's when she called her she said you dirty so yeah guys that is it that is the first episode of um season eight of love and marriage huntsville we're gonna see things happen um i don't know if i saw a scene where we have melody talking to martel i don't know if they have a scene like that but there's more to come according to marceau it's going to be a very entertaining season and um we need to tune in and watch we have some content creators calling for blackout i'm watching the show um there's some reality tv the realities there's some reality tv shows that i watch where i watch a couple of episodes and after that i'm like i can't take this no more but i've never had that feeling with love and marriage huntsville that means it's quite entertaining and i'm hoping to see some aspects of real estate in there this season besides what marso is showing us on his instagram page because he's the only one that's actually sticking trying to stick to the plan of what the show was supposed to be originally about so hopefully we have some some um real estate segments in there he told us that he and kimmy when he did his live on instagram marso he told us that he and kimmy film a lot of scenes together which are left on the editing room floor because they're too funny they're not dramatic enough so it don't make it to the sea. Hopefully we'll get to see more of that. But yeah, you know, I digress. I am um, rambling at this point. I just wanted to let you know that um, I watched the first episode. Um, and it wasn't, it was okay. Well, you can't lead off with everything being explosive. I know we have to climb and maybe we'll crescendo. And then we'll come back on down. We, st we still have a lot of castmates that we didn't see in this first episode. And I'm sure they're coming. So that is it. That is my recap and my review of Love and Marriage Huntsville. Season 8, episode 1. And if you're interested in reality TV review, entertainment news, celebrity news, celebrity gossip, make sure that you... um. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel, turn on your notification, and you will get notified when I upload new videos. I also review st um, shows on Bravo. I do most of the Housewives shows. I'm trying to get into Dubai because I know season two of Real Housewives of Dubai is coming back. I'm here binge watching season one and I don't know guys. We'll see. We'll see because it's not grabbing me. I'm up to like episode four and I'm not... It's like same old drama, same old thing, different country. So let, let me just push through and see what happened. But um, again, I digress. Subscribe to the channel. Like this video. Share it if you wish. And if anybody have the video of um, where they're saying that Kiki is telling everything about what's going on on the show last season, drop the link in the um, comments so we all can watch it. Because I really want to know what that's about. All right. Thanks again. And until next time, be sure to take care of yourselves and your families. Bye-bye.